everybody. We're here for our first cube draft video. So I'm going to try and teach a little bit about cube. We ended up, I was going to do a popper video, but I actually ended up at a point where the league is closed. So I can't really do another one. It's not open again until April 13th, which is when this video should be coming out. So we're going to be doing something a little different and I'm going to do a cube draft. I'm going to kind of keep an eye to people that have never done cube before. So you want to look out for really powerful finishers. Uh, things like Consecrated Sphinx are insane, because whenever an opponent draws a card, you may draw two cards. Dragon Lord Silmgar that steals things. Things that steal things are great. Um, other things are, you want to look for themes. So there are there may be certain themes in a uh, pack, like Dark Depths. It seems like unplayable, so there must be some kind of combo with it. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. This is something that has 10 ice counters for 3 mana. You can remove ice counters, get a 20-20, once you remove all 10. Things like that. Preordain is really nice because you want to be able to filter through your deck. Normally you wouldn't think of that as being super powerful, but it is actually very strong in a cube where it's a little bit more like a constructed format. Mono Red is also a thing. You want to uh, prioritize instead of things like Thunder Maw, which is a really, really powerful effect. Um, I actually prefer to prioritize things like one and two drops. So something like Jackal Pup as a 2-1 is often more important than that Thunder Maw we saw in the last pack, even though that's a 5-5 Hasted Flyer. Uh, we took Consecrated Sphinx because it's just kind of the biggest effect. It's a really good finisher for like blue control decks. You can stack up a bunch of counter spells, land a Consecrated Sphinx, and then just hold counter spells up for the rest of the game as you just grind them out. Uh, it's a pretty good strategy. I think we're going to take another Dissipate here talking about counter spells that is a pretty good one you also have remand which is not as bad as it seems normally in limited i would say remand looks very mediocre it's pretty decent here because you can stop a lot of like combo decks or really expensive cards and basically get a time walk on them so you counter the whole turn and you get to draw a card which is pretty good there's also some little combos of things like isochron scepter uh remand's probably the best thing you can put on it you counter their spell and draw a card and you get to do that every turn, but we'll take Dissipate here. Other things are like Mimic Vat is kind of interesting. You have to think about that again as an eye to what could have some combo potential. Like why, why would it be in the cube? So there might be creatures that come into play abilities because Mimic Vat is in the cube. It's a card that lets you copy creatures that have died. Uh, here we're going to take Dissolve. We just want to get a whole lot of counter spells. It's generally the way that I like to do my blue decks. I like to have some card draw in things like Consecrated Sphinx, maybe a Sphinx's Revelation. Uh, often earlier card draw too, though, if possible. Things like Compulsive Research, Thirst for Knowledge, those are things that we're looking for. Factor Fiction, uh, Deep Analysis. But other than that, we also want a lot of counter spells because that's the way we're going to turn that card advantage uh, into our win, basically. We're just going to stop our opponent from doing anything, and then on turns when we have enough mana, we can just... If they don't have anything that we can counter, then we can play like a Fact of Fiction at end of turn, or we can play a Thirst for Knowledge at end of turn. That's kind of the typical draw-go play style, if you've ever heard of that. Nicole Bolas is really, really powerful, but he's two colors that we're not, so I'd rather just stay blue here. A really important thing is dual lands, and I think we're going to grab one here. We don't know that we're black, but black is a very, very common sub color for a blue deck, so it's probably reasonable that we go there. I really like taking a dual land if possible, or a fetch land. I actually, Marsh Flats is really close to being better than Watery Grave here. It's, it's close, because Marsh Flats can catch Watery Grave. You've also got to remember that these fetch lands, if I get like a Tundra, so like a white-blue duel, then Marsh Flats, even if I'm blue-black, actually fetches not only black cards with Swamps, but it'll also fetch that Tundra, so it fixes both black and blue mana. So you can kind of cheat it that way too. So even if I don't end up playing white, I can still play some dual lands and some fetch lands and have a much better mana base. Dragonlord Oshitai is very powerful. Show and tell. Uh, you get to put an artifact creature or land from your hand into the battlefield. It's very strong, but I actually hate it in cube. The reason is that everybody else also is playing really strong cards that they can put into play off of it, and I have never had the card work out well for me. Every time that I try and use show and tell, I play something really big and nasty, and my opponent plays something just as big and nasty, and then I've passed the turn, they take their turn first, their creature basically has haste, and they just pound me to death with it. That's almost always what's happened. I don't think I've ever won a single uh, game after curving out into show and tell. Uh, here, 
there's some black cards, but they're not particularly interesting. Uh, I don't like Aberrant Overlord. You have to be very, very heavy black for it to be useful. Carrier Thrall, I don't even know why it's in this queue, really. Attrition can be good, but again, I think you need to be heavier black. I think here I just take Blood Crypt. It lets me take some very powerful spells in red if I want. Now we have Spell Pierce, which isn't bad. Counter spells are a lot better here than in the regular kind of limited environment. Cube's a very different way to draft. This one, I think, is low enough that I probably don't take it here. Negate is great. Spell Pierce is a bit mediocre. It's too situational. The the two mana is something that people can fairly often play. Spell Skite's not bad. It does counter certain combos. People have Splinter Twin combo in here, so that's a problem, like Splinter Twin Deceiver Exarch. Uh, mana Confluence is decent fixing, so Sulphurous Springs. Dungeon Geist is a very mediocre creature. Uh, it can just kind of get killed and doesn't do enough. It's just a 3-3 flyer. You want your creatures to be bigger, have like a bigger effect. I think I'm going to take the Mana Confluence over the Sulphurous Springs, although that's a very close uh, pick there. Alright, we've got Shivan Reef, so I can continue to take possible red lands and have decent picks for red colors. Like, Chain Lightning's actually pretty good. Dealing 3 damage to a creature or player is good removal against aggro decks. Kaiga's really nice, though. It's a big threat that when it dies, you still get an effect, so it's very hard for your opponent to deal with, because they can't just let the 5-5 five five stay into play, but often they can't kill it because you get their best creature. So that's a really good card to take. I think I like Kaiga here. Ooh, speaking of combos, so there's that Pestermite. We could get Splinter Twin or Kiki-Jiki and become the combo deck. So that's something that I could try here. If it's going late, that probably means that nobody's gotten any of like the Splinter Twin type cards yet. The problem is you don't open all of the cards in a cube, so we might not ever open Splinter Twin or Kiki-Jiki. Like, nobody in the entire draft might. So it, it makes it a little bit risky, whereas Forbid is really nice. Like, just straight counter a spell, and sometimes you can just discard two lands and keep it in your hand, and it just feels like you shut your opponent right out of the game. Oblivion Ring is a really good removal spell too, but I think that I'm just going to keep stacking up uh, for bid type effects. I just like going deep on counter spells. That's my favorite way to play blue decks. Plus, this way we're cutting blue very, very hard, so we can get kind of whatever we want in blue in the next couple packs, hopefully. So now we have Lightning Greaves, which can protect things like our Consecrated Sphinx, which is a pretty decent choice. I don't think I'm... There's no way I'm going to be able to play Divinity of Pride or... This Elspeth is not that great. Like, Planeswalkers are very good, but this one's just very mediocre. Uh, I think I take the Lightning Greaves here. Greeman did come back. I could play Temple of Enlightenment, and I'd have an option to play white spells instead of going black or red. It's certainly a consideration here. I do like Greeman a fair bit, though. Um, it's, it's, this is a really close one. I, I think Greeman's good. It's kind of mediocre unless you have some big tempo plays to make or like an Isochron Scepter. So I might just take the mana fixing. Ooh, and we're rewarded with a Sphinx's Revelation. Frost Titan is also one of the better finishers in blue, but we already have Kaiga and we already have Consecrated Sphinx. I think that I just want to have a really big draw spell. This can pull you back into games where you should just be dead. It's, it's a close one. There's two very, very good spells here. It might be safer to take Frost Titan just because it is a straight blue card, and I don't know for sure that I'm white, but I don't know. I think Sphinx's Revelation is powerful enough that I'm just going to take it here. I can take Serendiba Freet and possibly play it against really explosive aggro decks. It's not necessarily the best there because it does deal one damage to each turn, so sometimes if they're a burn deck, they can just sit back and let your own creature kill you. I like Day of Judgment, though. So we might just be blue-white, so some of these mana fixers might not be that important. Wow, blue's really open. We got Dungeon Geist and Spell Sky back. I like Spell Sky a lot because it shuts down a lot of combos. Seeker of the Way could be okay. It lets us get down a little bit of early pressure, and then we can back it up with all of the counter spells to give it prowess. So not totally unreasonable. I don't love it, but it's possible to go into our deck. Hmm... So we're looking mostly at blue. We've kind of figured out our colors. We're probably not black-red. We have a really powerful couple of white cards here, so we probably want to go in that direction. And luckily, we're pretty heavily rewarded, I think, this pack. There's not a lot of good blue cards. Uh, Fire Ice is actually very good, but not 
white something I'd want to first pick. It's just a great utility card. And I'm not even sure that I'm playing red right now. I don't have any blue red lands. I have a black red land, but I'm probably not playing black. So I think that we're just going to go for a very powerful white card here, which is Elish Norn. Elish Norn is just insane. It's It looks good, but it's even better than it looks. There's certain decks that have like green ramp decks as a big thing in cube, and they rely on a lot of like 1-1 one, one mana elves and things like that, or you have mono red aggro decks and white aggro decks. Those decks just die immediately to Elish Norn. If you can get to 7 and play Elish Norn, they can't do anything about it. All their creatures get minus 2, minus 2. They don't have creatures that have more than 2 toughness half the time. So you just end up killing their whole board and making all of your creatures huge, and there's almost nothing they can do about it at that point. Whew. Now this is a pack. Scalding Tarn would be great because it's mana fixing for us. We can probably find like a red-white dual land and it can be blue-white fixing. There's also Remove Soul, which is great counter magic. Soar of Temptation, which steals creatures. Stealing creatures is a very powerful effect. So this is something that's a very high pick. It's often something I'd want to first pick. There is, however, an Karn Liberated, and this card is real nasty. The one thing that I'm worried about here is going a little bit too high on our curve. We have two sixes, we have a seven, and we have the Sphinx's Revelation. Cube isn't necessarily slow. Uh, used to be helped out by having a lot of mana rocks, so there used to be a lot of like two mana spells that would give you extra mana as artifacts, but those are gone from this cube now. So we might be wrong in taking Karn here, it's so strong that I think I'm going to take it anyways, and I'm going to have to really focus on taking lower-end cards after this. But I think with our counter spells, with the Day of Judgment, and with, like, Spell Sky as a wall, we should probably be able to make it to 7 without even the ramp, and I'm going to try and do that as a deck. I'm going to need some card draw to make it there. I need, like, some Ponder, Preordain, Thirst for Knowledge type effect, so I can sort through my deck and make sure that I'm hitting all of my land drops. Uh, Blade Splice is a decent blocker, but I think I like negate a little bit more here. So we're going to take that. We might actually wheel the Blade Splicer too. It's not unreasonable. Ooh, Geist of Saint Craft is... It's a very weird card. I don't love it in this style of deck, just because it ends up being... It's a beatdown card, which is not something that I'm really interested in. Like, I try and... I need to try and make it to, like, 6 and 7 so I can play all of my crazy 7 drops. But... Like, this doesn't really help me get late, it, but it can close out a game really early. Uh, I'm not sure that it's the card that I want here. I think I'm going to pass on it. Gideon is pretty strong, because it does just spit out white uh, knight allies, so we can keep blocking every turn. Merfolk Looter might be what I want, though. And that seems weird. It's like, wait, but there's a Planeswalker. You don't want the Planeswalker? The thing is, is that drawing cards when your cards are all as good as these cards are, like, these are all amazing cards. Being able to filter through your deck and find your silver bullet cards like Elish Norn or Karn Liberated is often worth more than just a random Planeswalker. Even if it's a, even if it's a Planeswalker. Like, I know Planeswalkers are great, but just being able to find your silver bullet cards it might just be a little bit better. Uh, here we have Gilded Lotus that can help us get to these high drops. We also have Steam Vents that can let us splash another color. I think we don't really have a reason to be red yet. I think that we need this Gilded Lotus. Being able to get from 5 to 7 could be very important, and we do have Sphinx's Revelation that we can pump a bunch of mana into and just br draw a bunch of cards and save us some time. We also want to be able to play multiple spells a turn. Like, we want to be able to play something like Consecrated Sphinx and Hold Up Dissipate would be like an ideal turn sometimes, so Gilded Lotus just ramps us very hard and gets us there. Ooh. So this is an interesting pick. We have... Griffwing Cloudskate, which is actually pretty strong. You just suspend it on turn two, and then often you put them back a turn. Uh, you can bounce lands with it, which can be important sometimes. So the, you can bounce just anything, any permanent at all. The other card that's interesting is Dismember. Dismember is not really a black card. We can just play it for lose four life, and one mana target creature gets minus five, minus five. That sounds kind of terrible, like pain for life sounds steep, 
but it's kind of necessary in this format where you can have some really, really high quality creatures that'll deal you a lot more than four damage uh, in a couple turns. So Dismember, I think, is what we want here. We don't have any other removal spells yet, and so I think Dismember is just a little better. Ooh, I do like Night Veil Spectre a lot. This gives us a lot of card advantage. You get to play with their spells. If they don't have removal for this, it basically draws you an extra card every turn, which is very strong. There's nothing really else to take either. There's a few black cards. And I mean, I do have a Watery Grave, so it might be possible for us to play one of them. But I don't think I want Double Black and Underworld Connections. Bone Shredder is not that great. I think that we just take the Night Veil Spectre. Gets a little worse because we are trying to play some white cards. So that makes it a little bit awkward, but it's... Should be able to be played on, like, turn four in our deck, I think. Now, this is a gift. Counterspell is just straight up amazing. Two mana for Counterspell is just super strong. People don't realize just how great this card is. It seems so plain, but two mana is super efficient. Like, I was very happy to be picking up Dissipate, Dissolve, and Forbid. I'm way happier to grab Counterspell. This card is insane. So... Kind of sad that we passed on that uh, Isochron Scepter now, because we have Negate and Counterspell. Now, this is an interesting moment to actually talk about this. I never mentioned it before, but Brainstorm... You might think if you've played Legacy or Vintage, like, Brainstorm's really strong in those formats. So, like, why don't I want Brainstorm? I said that I wanted, you know, draw spells like Ponder, Preordain, and I wanted Thirst for Knowledge. I want those kinds of things. So Brainstorm seems like it should fit there. The problem is, is that in, like, Vintage and Legacy, you actually have like shuffle effects you have a bunch of fetch lands and i don't have any fetch lands so i can't shuffle away the two cards that i don't want that i put on top of my library and brainstorm is just a lot worse because of it i actually don't really like brainstorm all that often in the cube you need a bunch of uh fetch lands before it's good it can be good but it takes some work I'll remove soul wield so we have just a million counter spells not even sure if that's correct anymore we have so many it might be bad hmm Master of Waves isn't great in our deck because we don't have a lot of permanents. We have a lot of spells, but like Night Veil Spectre, Consecrated Sphinx, Kaiga, and Merfolk Looter are like the only things that are staying into play that are blue. It's still better than anything else. I'm not going to play Savannah at this point. I don't think that we're going to be those that many colors. Geist of St. Traft did come back. Wow, Oracle of Maldaya. So if you're in green, this is one of the best ramp cards. This card is very good. It ramps you extra lands every turn, so it does give you ramp. And not only that, but it also means that you're drawing cards. And the cards that you draw are... You're going to get all the lands out of the way, so that the card draws that you get on your turn, like during your draw step, are always going to be gas, like 90% of the time. So Oracle of Maldaya is fantastic. It's basically card draw and ramp in one neat little package. That card's seriously being underrated if it's going that late here. Uh, Marshall Koo's a decent board wipe. It's really expensive, so considering we already have Elish Norn, Karn, and Sphinx's Revelation, I don't think I want to main deck it. Plus, we have Day of Judgment, which is just a better board wipe than Marshall Koo. This is a really good card, though. Don't make any mistake about it. This card's good. Wow, now we get the best counter spell in the entire cube. This card is fantastic. It's better than Cryptic Command. Basically, you can choose most of the time to counter a spell with the three, and then you get to draw two cards off of it. That happens, like, 50% of the time. Sometimes you can, like, return a creature, draw a card, and counter their spell. Sometimes you just... You might only be able to draw, draw a card and counter their spell, but it, at that case, it's still just Cryptic Command. And the mana cost is a lot easier, so it often ends up just being way better than Cryptic Command. And Cryptic Command is great, so... Very happy to pick up Mystic Confluence. This is one of the better blue cards in my mind. All right, so we've got a, basically an entire deck already. We have 23 playable cards. So at this point, I think that I want to cut Geist of St. Traft. I'm going to take Hallowed Fountain because we do need mana fixing. And it'll make it a little bit easier to play some of our double white spells. Banishing Light would be good because we don't have a ton of removal. But I think that we just want the land here first. This is looking like a pretty sweet control deck. Oh wow, and control magic? That is fantastic. Stealing creatures when all of the creatures are such high quality is very strong. What people don't really think about sometimes is that a control magic is a two for one because you remove their creature and you get to play a creature. So this is a two for one for four mana. 
basically you get their best creature and you get to ki- like you get to kill their best creature and you get to make a really good creature at the same time. People don't often think of it that same way. It doesn't seem like a two for one. It doesn't feel that way, but it really is. They have to have some pretty good enchantment removal to constantly get rid of control magic. And there is some things like that in the cube, but not as many as you'd think. Now we have Seagate Oracle or Glacial Fortress, so more mana fixing. I think we just want the fixing here. Don't mind just taking that. I could possibly play like Martial Coup. I'm really not sure what I want. I don't think I want Master Waves because I just don't have enough permanence. We need something else that's better. Seagate Oracle might be really good in the deck. Being able to draw an extra card is something that we really want to do. Like, that's why we do want Looter here, too. I think I'm just going to take Glacial Fortress, though. Making sure that my mana is good when my deck is already this solid, I think, is very important. Oh, wow. Cryptic Command? All right, we have just every counter spell we could ever want. We've got Mystic Confluence, Cryptic Command, Forbid, Dissolve, Dissipate, Counter Spell, Remove Soul in the Gate. Like, we have all of the best counter spells easily. So fantastic. Uh, Yose is a very strong finisher, but I don't think I need it here because I already have Consecrated Sphinx, Kaiga, Karn, etc. The great thing about Yose is it's similar to Kaiga in that when you put it into play, it's a 5-5 flyer, so they have to answer it. But if they kill it, you basically just tap all their things and get an extra turn. So you time walk them the turn that they kill it, which is really strong, obviously. Ooh, Flooded Strand. So that's pretty perfect fixing for us. Terminus might not be bad. Uh, wiping out the board is good, but six mana is a little expensive. I don't have a lot of ways to put it on top, like for Miracle. If I had Jace the Mind Sculptor, that might be better, because you can put it back on top of your library and draw it for the Miracle cost. But I don't have anything like that, so we'll just take the Flooded Strand. Man, Blue has just been very open. Icefall Regent is a decent uh, like mid-range type card. It locks down a creature. It's slightly harder to um, target because it costs two more to cast spells on. So it might be hard for your opponent to remove. All right, I think I'll take the Icefall Regent. It seems like it could be playable in our deck. I need some number of finishers. Maloku might be able to be taken out. Maybe take out the Lightning Greaves? I'm not sure. I'll have to think about that one. Ooh, Legacy's Allure, Exclude. Exclude is fantastic. Chromatic Lantern's Mana Ramp. Man, this, this pack's just very strong. Supreme Verdict is a board wipe. Oh, God. I have no idea what I want here. Legacy's Allure is another control magic effect, so it's very strong. Every turn you get a counter, and then once you have enough counters, you can steal creatures with power less than or equal to it. Uh, obviously, Supreme Verdict just kills all the creatures, exclude counters things. Like, this is a tough pick. I might want the Chromatic Lantern just to try and ramp a little bit. That's tough. I think that I Lantern here. It might have been the Supreme Verdict. I think it was between those two. That was a very, very tough pick. I'll take a Pact of Negation. I don't think I'll want to play it main deck. Uh, it's just a little bit expensive, but if I come up against another like combo deck or something, it might be okay to kind of trick them, tap out, and get them. Ooh, Banishing Light's good. I do need some removal, so I'm going to have to cut some things here. I'm not sure what yet. We have a very, very strong deck. Man, Brimaz is a decent card. There is a white weenie deck, so basically you just take very efficient white creatures, things like Brimaz and uh, Soldier of the Pantheon, Champion of the Parish, cards like that, and you just try and overrun your opponent before they get to do all the sweet things that we're trying to do at, like, turn 7. Grab the Careful Consideration. Chasm Skulker can be good against us, because when you kill it, you put a bunch of squids into play that are equal to the number of uh, counters that are on it, and they all have Island Walk, so... That can be tough for us to deal with. I'm just going to get rid of it. Wow, and Terminus. All right, white-blue was very open. We cut it very effectively. That's good news for us. I'm going to take out the Lightning Greaves. I think I have enough counter magic, and we have Spell Skype to, like, redirect removal spells that I think I can get rid of it. Just so how many counter spells I have. I think I can protect our creatures. Um, wow, this is just a great deck. I'm really not sure what to cut. Maybe Fire Ice. I'm probably not playing the Fire side of it, and I didn't get the Ice Crown Scepter on the wheel, which is kind of what I was hoping for when I took it. Um, we have one more card, so we have 24 between creatures and other cards. 
I think. Could be Night Veil Spectre. I think that this Chromatic Lantern is actually really important now. Maloku is decent as a finisher because you can just kind of hold up counter spells and keep returning lands, making 1-1s, one and just slowly grind the game out. So that might be good enough. Hmm. I'm not sure which of those is better, Maloku or Icefall. I think I want to cut one of them. Considering we have Banishing Light and this member is removal for creatures, I think I'm just going to get rid of Maloku. We have a lot of good finishers already, so we'll just take Maloku out and worry about using Icefall region because it can remove a creature from the game, essentially. You just keep it tapped down, which is not pseudo-removal. It's decent enough anyways. I'm going to play Watery Grave, I think, because I do have the uh, Dismember that might be useful. So, like, if I can pay one less land for it, uh, one less land, one less uh, life for it, that would be good. You pay two life for each of the Phyrexian mana. So, paying less life is good. Mana Confluence seems okay. Glacial Fortress Temple. All right, so we just need Blood Crypt out. Everything else looks good. We've got some really good mana fixing, too. We got both of the dual lands, both uh, Hallowed Fountain and... Oh, we didn't get Tundra. No, sorry, I thought we did. We did get Hallowed Fountain, Glacial Fortress, and Temple of Enlightenment, though, with the Fetch Land, so that's really strong fixing for two colors. Now, let's look at what we can do for lands here. Don't need any Swamps, that's for sure. It's trying to add them for Dismember and Night Veil Spectre, but we just don't need them. So we've got 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 blue sources, and 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, eight white sources plus the chromatic lantern i think we go up one more white source because we already have like we said 13 blue so going to nine white seems okay we do have some double white cards that we really want to cast like day of judgment could be very important there's going to be uh, some number of games where there's an aggro deck and we're just going to hope that we have enough planes to play day of judgment on turn four and wipe their board so we have a chance to win the game so i think that this is good Something that I should probably mention right now, uh, which was a strategy that we did during the draft, was picking all of these dual lands and things. So we picked them fairly high, that's why we got a bunch of them. I could have maybe even prioritized them a little bit more. We were just lucky to get a lot of them. I feel like our colors were super open, so we got some later lands than you might expect other times. But you might want to pass some very powerful spells for dual lands because there are a lot of very strong cards in this cube like you can already see like there's cards in our sideboard that are great things like pact negation master waves geist the same Traft, like we have terminus in our sideboard malokus these are all really strong cards lightning graves is fantastic like all of these are great cards so spending a few picks to take lands to make your deck like just way better in consistency for your mana is definitely worth it like they're often worth a lot of very very strong cards just because you can always pick up replacements there's so many good cards in a cube you're gonna find some pretty strong cards almost no matter what you do and making sure that your mana works out so you can play those cards is just infinitely important it's very much like constructed like that you need to make sure that your mana base is very strong because other people are going to have very strong mana bases and they're going to be consistent if you start stumbling on land they're just going to run you over so it's good to have that in any case we'll go on to round one in just a minute here so get that tap down and then smack him in the face with this night veil see what we get what kind of candy comes out of our opponent when we hit him? A Lotus Cobra. Alright. Not particularly useful. 